Canada is recognized around the world as being an accepting and open country. Despite our reputation, our own Indigenous people have lived with mistreatment, disrespect, and for the longest time were marginalized. Colonization of this land meant the slow decay of Indigenous culture with the lack of grounding for its children. Social inequities and childhood adversity have led to mental illness of many children, Indigenous children ranging from anxiety, depression, and even identity confusion. These risk factors have led to suicide among Indigenous people. The suicide rate for First Nation male youth through the age 15 to 24 is 126 per 100,000 compared to 24 per 100,000 for non-Indigenous male youth. And for First Nation females, the suicide rate is 35 per 100,000 compared to 5 per 100,000 for non-Indigenous females according to Health Canada. That's five and seven times the national average. There is growing evidence that transgenerational impact of residential schools and other colonial policies on Indigenous mental health outcomes. Childhood adversity is something young Native children have had to deal with since the beginning of colonization. Imagine having the police show up at your front door at a very young age and being told you have to leave your home to go to a school far away from home. Most of their parents did not know when they were coming back or where they were going. These schools became known as residential schools and the separation not only affected the child, it affected the family as well. The result was a loss of traditional family values and an intergenerational trauma. This was how the Indigenous community cycle of childhood adversity all started for Indigenous families. Though this is just the beginning of residential school life, the school took away their identity, eroding a generation of traditional values. They can stay or, like Cheney Winjack, try and walk 400 miles home, all the while feeling like a stranger in their own land. Social inequities, such as forced relocation from one community to another, and the health inequities have also proven to lead to where individuals, communities, and nations that experience inequalities and social determinants of health not only carry an additional burden of health problems, but they are often restricted from access to resources that might ameliorate problems. Indigenous people often move to cities to try and find the wound of historical, social, and economic upheaval, such as colonization, residential schools, and the 60s scoop. And into the 70s, where children were taken off the reserves and fostered to mostly Caucasian families, continue to fester in many areas today. As the Indigenous population grows, more and more Indigenous youth are feeling like the song Powerless, when it says, I hope somebody can hear me because I don't want to be here no more. Their voice is unheard and their inability to communicate how they feel, their social opportunities diminished, they continue to feel disconnected within the community and lifestyle they are living. Many end up homeless and living on the streets. Despite the alarming number of suicide Suicides in Canada. Canada is attempting to lower the risk factors that cause suicides by community-based approaches, gatekeeper training, school-based suicide prevention programs. Indigenous Services Canada is working to address suicide prevention for youth. Social inequities and childhood adversity is the reason many children struggle with mental illness and that are now being treated and well supported to lower the suicide rates of Indigenous children, and they are still working to improve them.